to the travel business because there should be more evidence of a recovery when we get the financial results from EasyJet later on in about uh, an hour or so's time. But the budget airline has already said it expects business to be back to pre-pandemic levels this summer. But could the cost of living crisis bring those plans down to earth with a bump? Well, joining me now is Martin Olcock. Uh, now, Martin, from really the pandemic to a cost of living crisis, this industry has sort of gone from the frying pan into the fire, hasn't it? How resilient do you think demand is for travel, given the squeeze that we've already seen on budgets and what we're being told uh, we should expect in the future? Yeah, good morning. Look, it's been a tough few years, hasn't it? Um, I, I think um, the results, th th they're going to come out a bit later this morning. I, I think they're probably the best way I'd expect them to be is kind of cautiously optimistic. I mean, we've had a busy couple of weeks of earnings calls from lots of travel companies and, and tour operators and airlines. And there are some consistent themes coming through. So summer bookings are generally looking very strong. We are starting to see that demand returning back to pre-pandemic levels. I think EasyJet, certainly last time they announced, we're talking about this year being back to their 2019 levels. Um, and, and what they're starting to see is pricing really strong. You know, customers are having to, to, to pay a lot, but that is helping uh, travel companies to maintain their margins. So I think it'll be a reasonably kind of positive outlook for them, but there's some real challenges on the horizon, just like you, you just articulated. We talked about um, earlier in the week, we talked about what uh, happened with Ryanair. Ryanair saying it's still having to depress prices in order to get people to book and people, even though prices are low, they're booking later. How long can that kind of model go on for? Yeah, well, look, if you're Ryanair and you've got very deep pockets, I think um, that's definitely a strategy they can deploy where others maybe can't. I think if you look at EasyJet specifically, there'll be a few things concerning them. One, they're a little bit less hedged than other airlines, so... Um, Can you just explain price. what you mean by that? Yeah, of course. So so fuel prices, um, the fuel is a major cost for these airlines. Maybe it's a quarter of their cost base all, altogether. And so what they tend to do is put in place financial arrangements to, to kind of smooth the price over a long period of time. Uh, what happened though during COVID was that a lot of airlines um, reduced the amount of fuel they were buying because demand was so uncertain. And so now they find themselves, when the, the, the invasion in, in Ukraine started, they found themselves significantly underhedged and actually um, now have to buy fuel in the market at that inflated price. That's really going to hurt them. Um, I, I think cost of living further down the horizon uh, really has a concern. Again, less so for, for, for summer departures, I think. It's probably, you know, we get to the back end of this calendar year when those expensive energy bills are going to start landing on, on doormats. Um, you're going to have had a full year of this sort of 10% level inflation, maybe more and more talk of recession. That's really when I think you're going to start to see the demand uh, start to be curtailed. Maybe people will be less willing to, to book when we get to winter and, and, and for next summer. Okay. Um, Martin, thank you very much for your time and your assessment. Martin Olcott there.